Nancy Grace, I want to thank you for being with us. Breaking news tonight in the desperate search for a beautiful three-year-old Florida girl, Kelly. In the last hours, 600 pages of bombshell documents from inside the police investigation released. New details in the Kaylee Anthony case. Florida prosecutors are releasing nearly 600 pages of new documents, including transcripts of interviews, text messages, and phone records. Everyone who was interviewed talks about the smell from that car. Immediately, Casey's mom, Cindy, thought it smelled like death. There's something wrong. I thought my daughter's car today, and it smelled like this, and it's that body, and it's a car. She was worried that perhaps if something had happened to Kaylee or Casey, and her friends, before the car was abandoned, they all warned about the smell. And she explained that it was a dead animal. Made my daughter ran over something. Tony Lazaro, the boyfriend that Casey had when all of this was going on, he said that in July, early July, she started having all these nightmares. And she would just wake up in the cold sweats. And he would ask her, you know, what's wrong? What's this all about? And she would say things like she was worried about their relationship. What did the person do that you need arrested? My daughter. For what? for stealing an auto and stealing money. Cindy Anthony, the day when she went over to confront Casey, also told Tony that, hey, I hope you're rich because she's probably gonna just, you know, rob you dry here. Did Tony have anything to do with Kaylee? No, Tony had nothing to do with Kaylee. Uh, so I, wh why do you want to talk to him? Because he's my best friend. He's my boyfriend and I want to actually talk to him because I didn't get a chance to talk to him earlier because I got arrested on a win today because they're blaming me for stuff that I never would do that I didn't do straight out to Mark Williams with WNDB Mark what's the latest Nancy, a bombshell this afternoon. The state attorney's office here in Orlando releasing 600 pages of documents. Those documents including interviews with boyfriends and uh, good friends of Casey Anthony. Uh, they shed light and they show the emotion and the stability of that 22-year-old Casey Anthony. One of the things, of course, the smell coming from the car. She told her friend Amy Heizinga that she thought her dad borrowed her car. He ran over a squirrel and, and, uh, and basically... Uh, the, the squirrels died under there, later telling Amy that uh, she found the bodies of the squirrels plastered to the frame. Well, according to neighbor Brittany Shriver, no one has used that car in about a year and a half other than Mom Casey Anthony. Everybody, in the last hours, this stack of police documents from inside the police investigation have been released. This stack has been released by the state's attorney's office. And it is a bombshell, a treasure trove for prosecutors. It details the fact that Mom Casey Anthony acknowledges the smell of death in her own car. This isn't something her grandmother, Cindy Anthony, dreamed up. She herself says it and blames it basically on her father running over a dead animal. Not only that, Mark Williams, she comes up with a whole new story as to what happened to little Kelly. Uh, she does. As a matter of fact, she says she was going to go to Tampa to search for a job for a month and that Kaylee was headed off to the babysitter. But the big thing is the fact that Cindy Anthony went into her room, found things uh, missing from, from Casey's articles that she always had, but there was nothing taken for little Kaylee. And if you're going to go to a babysitter, you usually pack a, a pretty big bag, especially if you're going to be away for a month, Nancy. To Kathy Bellich, joining us tonight with CNN affiliate WF. TV. She's there in Orlando. Kathy, I find it highly probative. The items found left behind inside Mom Casey's car. Yes, apparently a baby doll that Kaylee would go nowhere with, a car seat. She uh, no indication that there there was any plan, any legitimate plan to uh, leave Kaylee in someone's care. Also about the smell of that car, Casey told her brother that that smell first showed up in that car June 5th, which was their mother's birthday. And Lee uh, didn't believe it because he said she would never drive around in that car for that long with that smell nor would she put Kaylee in that car with that smell. He also said that their father, George, was meticulous about keeping that car clean. So she has told, obviously, numerous stories about that smell, but also that it started back on June 5th, which doesn't seem to make sense either. Very disturbing, Mark Williams with WNDB, is that the grandparents, when they go to finally get the car, they find out 
Uh, from the towing service, I believe the car is still sitting there outside mm -hmm. an Amscot. They go to get it, and the stench is so overwhelming. They don't have the key to get in. They are terrified, according to these documents, that their granddaughter or daughter was dead in the trunk. That's, uh, that's correct. And, and the big thing is the, the, the towing company didn't have the key, so George and Cindy Anthony went down there and they opened up the trunk and, and, and this, this odor just came out of the back. And one of the things that, that the guys at the towing yard said is just a couple of days before they had to clean up a car that uh, an individual took his life in, so they knew the smell of death as well. So, I mean, that stench is just overpowering. You know, uh, the fact that she basically acknowledges it, number one, the smell of decomposition, blames it on her father running over an animal, leaving the favorite baby doll behind, the doll that little Keely would go nowhere without. Interesting, back to you, Kathy Belich, the fact that when Mom Casey leaves her home, her, grand her the grandparents' home, her parents, she takes her belongings, but leaves everything belonging to Kelly behind. That's right. That, that seems to be an indication she was not planning to take a trip with Kaylee anywhere, leaving the important articles and, of course, as we said, Kaylee's favorite baby doll behind. Uh, and she's told so many different stories about what she was planning to do during that month. Uh, this is just one more story that doesn't make sense. We are taking your calls live. Let's unleash the lawyers. Joining me tonight in our Manhattan studios, veteran prosecutor Eleanor Dixon. Her specialty, crimes on children. Out of Atlanta, defense attorney Raymond Judice. Out of New York, high-profile lawyer Richard Herman. Eleanor, weigh in. Well, I think they probably released some of this documents to show the evidence that is mounted up against Casey Anthony, as well as to maybe put some pressure on her. At some point, maybe she'll have to explain these things to the public. Right. Well, let me just say this. I haven't gone through all 600 pages of alleged bombshells and tre treasure troves, but 600 pages hasn't produced a one-page indictment for homicide yet. I don't know about that, Richard Herman. Agree or disagree? I completely agree with Ray. If they had it, Nancy, I believe the DNA is degraded. This 600 pages are meaningless. That they had the so, DNA, they would have indicted her. Let me get her. Herman. The fact that she's made up another story about voluntarily giving Kelly away for a month to go job hunting. That goes to her mental state. That's going to be the defense, Nancy. Kaylee? No, sir. Do you hurt Kaylee or leave her somewhere and you're worried that if we find that out that people don't look at you the wrong way? No, sir. And you're telling me that Zenaida took your child without your permission and hasn't returned her? the last person that I've seen with my daughter. 